Okay, let's talk about the Bible and how you're supposed to read it. Oftentimes people will say to me when I try and defend the teachings of the Bible, they'll say, I'm cherry picking the good scriptures. I'm cherry picking the good scriptures. And I say to you quite clearly, what is the issue there? Why would I not do that? Why? why what is wrong with that? Cherry picking the things that are meaningful and resonate with me that I believe to be true. That is what I've done in every single walk of my life. That is what I've done round the boards. But prior to me becoming a Christian, prior to me to becoming a Christian, what did I do? I cherry picked. When I listen to the Rolling Stones, what do I do? I cherry pick. I don't listen to every single song they ever play. I cherry pick the music that is meaningful to me. Give me shelter. Mother's little helper. Monkey man. I cherry pick the music of the Rolling Stones that I that I consider important or good music. When I read prior to me becoming a Christian, what did I do? I read from a wide variety of sources. And guess what I did? I cherry picked the parts that were meaningful to me as a person that I thought resonated as true, meaningful, something I should remember. Ralph Waldo Emerson, what did I do? I cherry picked the parts that I, of him that I found wise, instructing. Useful. I read the Bible the exact same way. I read the Bible and I cherry pick the scriptures that resonate with me as a human being, that resonate deeply with me as a human being, that I find wise, useful, instructive, that are trying to make me a better person, a better person as we all commonly understand that to be, more compassionate, more kind, more considerate, more loving, more merciful. I cherry pick those scriptures. Guess what that's called? That's called the right way to read the Bible, period. That's called the right way to read the Bible as a spiritual person, as a book of spiritual instruction. I see the part that says, you know, stone a witch on a Sunday. I don't go around trying to, to I don't go around trying to embody that. Why? Because it doesn't make any sense to me. It doesn't make any sense to me to try and embody that particular scripture. The one that says, blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. That makes complete and utter sense to me, resonates deeply with me as a person. There's no struggle there. There's no, there's no melodrama. There's no confusion. It's really easy for me to read the Bible. I cherry pick the parts that are meaningful to me. And guess what? I kind of leave the rest alone. So does every other Christian on planet Earth. So does every other Christian on planet Earth. The difference is I'll tell you that up front. And they'll dance around like a like a crazy person trying to pretend that they read the, that trying to explain to you why it says stone a witch on a Sunday or whatever it says. What does it say? Kill the witch on a, it says to do something to the witch on a Sunday. Maybe you stone. the. I forget exactly what you do, but you're not supposed to be nice to her. She's I forget exactly what happens. Somebody's preaching on a Sunday, you kill him or something like that. Something like that. The difference is they'll try to explain to you why it's in there. I won't. I don't care. Yeah, I won't try to explain to you why it's in there. Why? I don't care. No, don't care at all. There are some that I can make a really good educated guess about. You know, the famous God endorses slavery in Exodus 23. I forget if that's where it is. Somewhere in there. 20, yeah, maybe 21 or something. God endorses slavery. I can make a really good educated guess as to why that's in the Bible. Why? Because it was a slave-holding society, and they're the ones that wrote the Old Testament. Duh, yeah, <laughs> Duh, rocket science, right? If the Old Testament were, were written by southern slaveholders in 1845, guess what they would say? They would say, slavery is A-OK, -okay. slavery is right and good. <laughs> yeah, head explodes. Does it negate the whole morally? Make your case. I'll, I'll have that debate with you, make your case. That because that scripture endorses something that is clearly wrong, yeah, it negates the whole of the book morally. But in order to make that case fairly with any amount of integrity, you're going to have to take into consideration the spirit and the intent of the entire book and what it is communicating to you as an entire book. And you're going to have to, you're going to, have to factor in how people commonly understand it, not just little, you know, your little, your little friends who are pulling out the scriptures that, that tend to negate the whole. That's why they're controversial. Did it ever occur to you that they're controversial for a reason? Because they tend to negate the spirit and the intent of the entire book. Every single one of you knows what a Christian is supposed to be. 
including you, the atheists. A lot of times you call people out. You'll call people out correctly. And I'm like, go for it. You'll say, you're not being a really good Christian. You know, I'm a better Christian than you are. And I tend to think you mean it. Because you have some common understanding of what the book actually teaches. Of what it means to, to try and aspire to be Christian. And I spelled it out for you. It means mostly this. You should be a more merciful person than you are presently being. You should try to be a more humble person than you are presently being. If you're a humble person, good. Be, be more humble. If you're merciful, good. Be even more merciful. Can't err on that side. You should try to be more loving, more compassionate, and more caring human being. And operate with more integrity in this world. If you have atheism teaching that teaches you that, I'd endorse it. I would endorse it. I wouldn't, I wouldn't wait for Matt Dillahunty. If Matt Dillahunty, as an atheist, were, had a set of principles, these are the principles that I want atheists to aspire to, and they, they resonated like that, I'd say those are right, those are true, those are good. I wouldn't wait for him to say something stupid and evil and then go, aha, all of it's garbage. That's what you're doing. You can pretend that's not what you're doing, but we both know that's exactly what you're doing. That's exactly what you're doing. That's exactly what you're doing. You're trying to condemn the whole thing because you found five sentences here and five sentences there that that operate against the spirit and the intent of the whole. And the spirit and the intent of the whole isn't what you say it is. It's what's commonly understood. Commonly understood. That's what the spirit and the intent of the entire Bible is. It isn't what you, the atheist, trying to win an argument, says it is because you've found, you know, this, this scripture here where God is mean and this scripture here where, you know, you're, it's gay bashing and this scripture here. Line them all up. Give, give, put them all in a row. You've got 500 total. Maybe. At the most. 500 total. 500 total. So you're going to condemn the whole book. The book is thousands of pages long. There's probably more f than, than 500 pieces of good, solid, righteous advice, good, solid things that you could learn from and grow from in just the book of Matthew. Honestly, read the book of Matthew with your eyes open. Don't read it to find the part where, where you know, find the part that makes no sense to you. Read it to find the parts that resonate with you. Read it to find the part where you're like, you know, I'm not sure if I'm 100% on board with this, but this teaching right here is good, and this is a good way to act, and that's a good way to act. You'll be amazed at how quickly you find the Bible to be a wise and good book. Yes, a good book. Wise and good. I don't find hate in the Bible, people. If you do, you aren't looking correctly. I don't. The Bible says, let nothing come out of your mouth except it be for the edification of others. Nothing. That means I'm not even supposed to talk to you in a way that... that you know, isn't helpful to you. That's not a book of hate. That's a book of life. It's not. It's not a book of hate. <laughs> it's really honest to God not. You know, this is my command that you love one another. That's not an evil command. Yeah, but then if you don't, he's going to throw you out. Well, okay, so that part, so it gets a little tricky at the end. Don't go, don't skip ahead. Don't skip ahead in the read. Don't go to the end part where you get sentenced to hell for not doing it. Okay, so fine. That part's a little, that part's a little gnarly. You're just supposed to read it one, one, one step at a time. You know, we're just working on the beginning parts. Anyways.